Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to show you what the Laplacian looks like in cylindrical coordinates. So here we have the del operator times the del operator operating on some scalar quantity. So u represents a scalar quantity. This can be written as the del operator squared times u. So it's basically the dot product between two del operators operating on some scalar quantity. Now, we're going to show you what this looks like by simply multiplying these through. Now, there's three terms here, there's three terms there, so we'll end up with nine terms in total. And the first one will look like this. There will be the row unit vector dotted with the row unit vector, which of course will be equal to one, times the product of the partial with respect to rho, times the partial with respect to rho. Now you may say, well, why don't I make that a second derivative? And we don't do that here because we'll change the format later. You'll see in just a moment why. Next, we'll multiply this times this. So we get the plus the rho unit vector dotted with the phi unit vector times the partial with respect to rho times the partial Oh, and I forgot the 1 over rho, can't forget that. I still have a 1 over rho times the partial of with respect to rho times the partial with respect to phi. And then plus this times this, so we get the rho unit vector dotted with the z unit vector times the partial with respect to rho times the partial with respect to z. And we'll put the whole thing there in parentheses. We'll continue now with this times this. So we get plus the phi unit vector dotted with the rho unit vector times 1 over rho times the partial with respect to phi times the partial with respect to rho. And again, I believe that you'll see that these will all cancel out because whenever we have two orthogonal unit vectors, when you dot them together, you get zero, so those terms will all go to zero. Now, this term multiplied times this term will not go to zero because here we have plus the rho unit vector, not the rho, but the phi unit vector dotted with the phi unit vector, so this is going to be equal to one. One over rho times one over rho will be one over rho squared times the partial of with respect to phi times the partial with respect to phi. Continue on over here, so we have plus the phi unit vector dotted with the z unit vector, again that will go to zero, times one over rho times the partial with respect to phi times the partial with respect to z, and finally taking the third term, plus the z unit vector times the rho unit vector times the partial with respect to z times the partial with respect to, that would be rho, plus the z unit vector, phi unit vector dotted together times 1 over rho times a partial with respect to z times a partial with respect to phi. And finally, plus the z unit vector dotted with the z unit vector. Again, this one will not go to zero because that's again 1 times a partial with respect to z times a partial with respect to z. And then all will then be operating on some scalar quantity u. So the ones that survive are the following. Let me circle the terms that will survive. This term will survive. This term will survive. And finally, this term will survive. And all the other terms will go to zero because we're having a dot product between two unit vectors that are perpendicular or orthogonal to one another. So this then becomes as follows. The Laplacian of a scalar quantity is therefore written as. Now in the first term, it's a little tricky because we like to write things in this format. 1 over rho times a partial respect to, with respect to rho times the following product. But what we're going to do here is instead of multiplying this together like this, we're going to write this. Well, first of all, this times this is going to be 1 times 1 over rho times the partial with respect to rho because we want to have the same format as this. So I introduced the 1 over rho. I need to cancel that out by then multiplying this times rho times the partial with respect to rho. So in a way, you kind of think of it as being in the same format as this. We have a 1 over rho introduction times a rho introduction. They cancel out in a way, so you get back what you started with. The reason why we want to write it like this is if you don't multiply this quantity times rho first before you take the second partial derivative of rho, you usually get a problem when you try to work out the real problems. So we like to write it in this form. 
And the next one, this simply then becomes plus 1 over rho squared. We don't have the problem there, so we can simply take the second derivative with respect to phi, and then plus this term right here, which is simply the second derivative with respect to z. And I, of course, have to put a square symbol there. And we're going to then operate that on u. Then when we bring that in here, this can then be written as follows. This is simply equal to 1 over rho times the partial with respect to rho times rho partial with respect to rho of u plus 1 over rho squared times the partial squared with respect to phi squared of u plus the second partial derivative with respect to z squared of u. And that will then be the final form of the Laplacian operating on the scalar quantity. And that's how we end up writing it.